So it turns out that there's actually one uh, major problem with with these with this simplistic implicit approach, uh, and the problem with it is uh, not with the um, the spatial derivative. So this is actually good because um, this is this is second order accurate. Right. If if you remember, uh, the truncation error in in this equation was order h squared. So that's pretty good. But this is just um, just the two point uh, finite uh, divided difference. This is actually only first order accurate. And that is a problem. We have this mismatch here. We're a lot better in this equation than we are in this equation. If only there were something that we could do about this, um, then uh, we would be in a lot better situation because we would have a lot more accurate. E so as we do that, we just need to redo this time estimate. So if we remember the centered, so we use the forward or backward or whatever uh, to finite divided difference. If we use the center divided finite di divided difference, remember that was um, uh, the derivative is equal to what was f prime of x uh, is approximately equal to uh, f of uh, x uh, i plus 1 minus f x i minus 1 all over 2 delta x. Okay? Uh, and these are t's now instead. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the value of, of t at the midpoint. Okay, And if we're doing that, then our delta x is actually just happens to be uh, our delta t over 2. And so for 2 delta t over 2, is, it, it just becomes uh, delta t. Okay, so this whole approach with trying to do this and make it second order accurate on both is called the crank. Um, yeah, here we go. The Crank Nicholson method. So we can just come down, uh, come down and show you that. So uh, this is the first step. So the first step is to get a second order, a second order accurate, um, a, a second order accurate um, time uh, uh, approximation, and and it ends up being actually the exact same equation because we really only had and I'm gonna put these on here for this equation right away we really only had the, these two points that we could use but the difference is we're actually approximating the time at this point so uh, I'm gonna put a little we'll put a little ghost a ghosts point right there ghost circle alright so that's what we did and we did that approximation well uh, we have to have we will need to write out the equation for the the spatial um, the, the equation. So this is dt dt, and I, I wrote um, I wrote this out right here because this is the big difference. It's at t l plus one half instead of um, uh, what we just call it, let's see it's t i l plus one half instead of t i l or t i l plus one, um, which or TIL, which is what it was using before. So this is this is the nice thing about this approach. Now the problem, though, is that we have to expand the other around this point, uh, around these other points. So uh, then when we do that, we it, it looks a little bit more complicated. So we have to say it's one half T uh, I plus one L minus two uh, TIL. So we're just doing it at each point. And then we're averaging it. See, this is all times one half. So you add these together and divide them by two. So then we get an average. So if you look, then we have t i plus one l uh, t uh, minus two t i l two i. So if we mark these, we're actually using then in this approximation, we're using these points and these points here. So we're using all of those points in the approximation. So this is nice. You you would think that if we do it this way then we are going to get more accurate solution and we do. Um, so when you write all this out uh, for the differential equation uh, section partial of t right with respect to x there must be a k in here somewhere is equal to um, the partial of t 
uh, with respect to time and and so this is this is what you get uh, when you simplify that out right here okay so this is the general equation this first one this is the general equation so that's minus lambda and, and that lambda is the same same thing before like uh, m minus uh, k delta x or by k delta t over delta x squared or whatever um, that's that's what the lambda is so it's the same same thing as we talked about before so um, here we have the 1.2.3456 5, 6, the six points that we talked about here um, that we're using. Um, then uh, this is for if we're given boundary conditions first and last point so this will be at the, for the first equation and this will be the last equation and these have just been rewritten to include the boundary point. This is actually general. This includes all of them. All we've done to get the second one is we've taken this term and we're assuming that we know that value and so we can take it to the other side of this equation and it appears right here with all the stuff that we sort of know. So that goes over here. That's all we're doing there and then in this last equation uh, we are taking, let's see, um, that term stays the same, that term stays here, it's this term right here. This is the term, uh, we take this term to the other side and it appears uh, right there I believe, yes. And uh, this term here, which matches this term here, um, is, is known as well. Okay, so that's what happens and the nice thing about this is it comes up with a a good uh, tridiagonal system that we have to solve, and so it is all this all this computation, but it's a nice trying uh, tridiagonal matrix. So it's not that bad because we have very efficient ways of solving tridiagonal tri matrices. So this is the Crank Nicholson method for um, again the finite difference method, and it's particularly suit suitable for uh, parabolic partial differential equations. It's an implicit, again, implicit method. Um, and that's an important distinction because as we know, the implicit methods don't have the stability problems and the convergence problems that the explicit methods have, as we found with explicit runge cutter versus uh, the other implicit um, ordinary differential equation methods. Same applies here.